This hat wants you to join the military. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Nathaniel Flint of the Landship Scorpios, and today on World Hatstery 101, we're talking about the peaked cap. That's right, we're back to World Hatstery 101. We're going to start off with the peaked cap. Um, I've been really excited to talk about this hat, so let's jump right into it. The peaked cap started around the uh, early 19th century in Northern Europe, and it's still around in general use and civilian use and for officers in the military around the world. It is still uh, a hat that we use in modern time, um, and it really doesn't seem to be like it's going to uh, fade out of use. The hat consists of a short visor, or a peak where it gets its name from, but it also has a peaked crown that kind of comes up in front. It also consists usually of a wide band that goes around the kind of uh, whole bit of the hat, which usually holds some form of insignia or rank or something of the sort, but it's also common uh, in more uh, civilian use for it to be blank as well. Alternate names for this hat are the service cap, the forage cap, the barracks cover, a combination cap. In the UK, it's just called a peak. In the United Kingdom, uh, this visor area is called uh, the peak, which is where it gets its name from. However, in America, we just call this the visor, so we think it gets its name from this peak of the crown here. Um, neither is really wrong, but uh, it's worth saying. The hat was initially worn by working class men in Northern Europe. However, it began to appear in the senior ranks of the Russian and Prussian armies uh, in the later years of the Napoleonic Wars. It was less cumbersome than the shakos or the bicorns that were being used across Europe during that time. Russia was the first country to officially adopt the hat for military use due to Alexander I. The nickname that they gave the hat was the Soldier's Flapjack. During the Mexican-American War, uh, the American military adopted the hat due to the warmer climates they were fighting in. Uh, it was actually more comfortable and easier for the troops than the uh, shakos that they were using up till that point. During the early 20th century, this spread like wildfire. Uh, all countries around the world started using it. Um, and replacing their own headgear and it kind of stayed that way until about sometime in World War One where uh, due to the increased head injuries um, they actually changed to more combat helmet wear which became the new modern standard. In the German army uh, the peaked cap replaced the Chaco during the Napoleonic Wars but it was then replaced by the Pickelhaba uh, in the 1840s. The officers, however, continued to wear the hat to distinguish themselves from the French army due to the French army changing to wear kepis, um, and they wanted to uh, have a different look from their enemies. Around this time uh, was also the first use of the frock coat uh, to protect the officer's uniform from the muck of war. I thought that was a cool little fun fact. This hat is a staple of the early days of the First World War, especially on the English and French sides. Um, this was this is basically what everyone went into battle with. Um, however, the again the increased head injuries that happened with the new modern types of warfare led to everyone quickly changing to protective headwear like helmets or masks, which made this hat then obsolete. This hat is also used in many forms of civilian life. It's used by law enforcement, it's used by fire departments, it's used by some ambulance services. It's also used by custom agents around the world, um, especially part of their formal wear. This is a very popular hat type uh, for many different um, agencies 
and emergency services and just formal use from around the world. It also finds its way into the Merchant Marines and Civil Aviation uniform. Um, so you can find styles of this hat all over the place without any trouble. The Polish Rogatiqua is a four-cornered uh, peaked cap that deserves its own video, but I wanted to mention it here since it'll be some time until I get to that video, but it looks really cool and it's very unique in the world of peaked caps, so I wanted to make a comment of it. And with that, that is basically the 101 of the peaked cap. If you guys liked it, please be sure to like the video and share it uh, so that we can find our audience here at World Hatstory 101. If you like this video and you want to see more hat histories, do check out the rest of the series. We do many other types of hats and we're back. We're going to be doing many more. Subscribe for more World Hatstory and Steampunk content here on the Landship Scorpios. If you have any fun facts that you want to share about the peaked cap, go ahead and comment down below. We love talking hat and hat histories. And again, this is a 101, so I, not, I didn't necessarily cover everything there is to cover about this hat. So feel free to leave it down in the video below. We might be doing little extra videos down the road to uh, recap these uh, things I missed in the hat history videos. Do feel free to check us out on Facebook.com slash Landship to look us up Landship Scorpios on Facebook. Uh, we also have a Twitter account. Um, those will all be linked down below. Do uh, check out our other videos that we have on our channel. And thank you so much. And with that, you guys have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye.